Welcome to CCFR's Canada Downrange. Sport shooting is the most exciting and least covered sport in Canada. Come with us as we travel across our great nation to discover the coolest events, amazing locations, and the most interesting people. Today on CCFR's Canada Downrange, we head to Tabor, Alberta, where the Southern Alberta Precision Rifle League is holding a PRS event at the Tabor Shooting Foundation. Then we will get to see part one of Project Maple Seed as one of the instructors teaches the techniques needed to improve downrange accuracy. Today's match, we got a team of 55, or a group of 55 shooters. Uh, everybody runs through one of 10 stages, number by number. Uh, there's a course of fire predetermined. Everybody gets a match booklet in the morning before the match starts. And everybody's shooting through a timed event, limited round count, and uh, off of different barricades. Today's match is um, kind of a Canadian style of PRS that we have going on a bit. We don't have the range that they have down in the States, so we like to shorten up the target times, or shorten up the stage times, uh, have lots of movement, moving around. <laughs> How it works essentially is uh, when the buzzer goes, the shooter will run through the course of fire. Uh, it's uh, just steel targets, so a hit is a point. Any stage will have anywhere from eight to 12 rounds, and probably anywhere from one to four targets. Six, I hope yes, I'm yes. I heard that one good behind me too, and I almost thought. The general firearm being used today is a bolt action rifle. Uh, you're looking at um, long barreled guns, 24 to 26 inch barrels. Almost all of them have a muzzle brake on there. They're shooting uh, six mil or a six and a half mil caliber normally. Almost all the scopes are first focal plane, high magnification, five to 25, uh, six to 24, etc. Stocks, a lot of chassis these days, masterpiece arms, uh, KRGs. To have all the high end gear, yeah, it can definitely be pricey. You can easily have a $10,000 setup without breaking a sweat. But at the same time, you can be just as competitive with uh, off the shelf Tika uh, CTR or Tika TAC A1 and a decent scope like a Bushnell rather than a uh, Schmitten Bender or anything like that. We probably got. I don't know, probably eight or 10 rifles on the line today. And a lot more of our rifles out there actually use our muzzle brakes. And that's the device on the end of the barrel that reduces the okay. recoil, uh, which is very important in PRS style shooting because you can't have your spotter tell you where you're hitting or missing so you can see your hits and or misses. Impact one. Impact. It was just like, like skimming. Not like I couldn't see it hit, but I seen the plate just move a little bit. Really? Wind blew it. <laughs> as long as wind blows it onto the target, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just barely over the left edge. The matches that we run are all held at the Tabor Shooting Foundation. Uh, it's a new range. It's only about two, three years old, but it's a great facility. Uh, they have they have three rifle bays. They have a 100 meter, a 200 meter, and then this 600 meter range, which is what we run ours on. So it's just a really great facility overall. Well, we got started with the idea in 2011. It's been a few uh, months and you know, a year trying to plan, and a group of us volunteers got uh, organized an executive and formed the Table Shooting Foundation so that we could go ahead and manage this place. The Tabor Shooting Foundation range hosted today's competition, the Canadian version of the Precision Rifle Series. This is where participants from across the U.S. compete against each other throughout the year and are ranked across the nation.
buzzer, you drop into prone and shoot that plate with four rounds through the S, four rounds through the P, four rounds through the L. Your muzzle must be behind this board. There is not a league in Canada yet, but the organizers of the event have had to turn away competitors and are hoping that it can develop into something bigger. It look like it. So if you hit, have a shot at this corrugated board, DQ on the stage. Everybody hear that? Okay. The PRS scene in Alberta has actually really exploded. I ran the first ever like PRS titled match uh, in 2016, and we had about 20, 25 shooters. Started the SAPRL with Sean and Chad last year, and we ran, I think, 40-ish 40, 40 shooters for both matches. And now we actually cannot uh, accommodate the number of people that we want to have register. We generally uh, fill up our number of shooters within the first day. Um, we, it's great to just compete with guys daily, and you know each match you go to, and you know you you get beat one day, and you'll beat the guy the, the next day. It's just great to see everybody come out and and just strengthen their skills. Anybody in this in this sport can have a good day or a bad day. You know, I mean, there's just so many outside factors in shooting. I mean, you can be absolutely on fire one day and totally suck the next day and that's just the joys of it. The thing with the shooting sports though is that you're really dependent on yourself. It's not a team thing where one guy can be picked up and, and carried. You either shine or you don't. I couldn't find that. The number eight's turned sideways now. I think the sport's growing because the equipment is more accessible. There are a lot more companies entering into the market and creating different rifle systems and chassis systems that are more affordable for the average shooter. Um, some of those are represented here today by some of the prizes that have been donated and that a lot of shooters are using. When I was buying other people's rifles, I was always a little wanton and was brought up to believe that rather than bitch about something, do something. So I created a company. We now make guns. This is the kind of thing that becomes, you know, a national league. This is the thing that becomes a branded series franchise, just like the PRS in, in the U.S. So uh, there's sort of a ripple effect coming out of the U.S. into Canada. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg and the beginning of something right. really big and really good. And it's exciting and, and positive for the shooting sports and our industry and economy. This sport is for anybody that wants to come out. We've had last year and today, uh, the youngest shooter was 12 last year. He's 13 this year. I love handling the rifle. It's, it's fun, you know? like just watching the bullet hit the target, you know, hearing the ting of the bullet hitting the steel. I was like uh, probably around six when I fired it. Get the course of fire. Yeah. Jake, spotter's up. Shooter ready. Stand by. I just like the boom. Get back. I kind of messed up on my first stage, but I think I'm doing pretty go. It's fun, you should get into the sport. That's pretty much what I have to say. Here, stand by. Based on the American model, the organizers of the SAPRL would like these competitions to become a national league, with events taking place year round. If the competition level is any indication, there would be plenty of shooting enthusiasts who would gladly take the opportunity to be part of an exciting league like this in Canada. A 
At the end of the competition, everyone left wanting more, and the SAPRL is working towards making that a reality in the very near future. For more information on the SAPRL, go to their Facebook page at facebook.com slash southern-alberta-precision-rifle-league. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca. All right, quick tip for today, trigger lock versus cable. So personally, I never use a trigger lock when I have to use a secure locking device unless I have no other choice at all. And I always go with cables because cables are the best in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. So as, you're, as you probably well know, that in Canadian law and firearm regulation, you are obligated to use a secure locking device in certain situations in storage, certain situations in transport, and uh, in certain situations in display, if you do choose to display your firearms, let's say, on a wall, meaning in plain sight. So you have to use these things, which is the best. I personally like cables for a number of reasons. Number one, trigger locks might not work on all firearms, depending on how wide the trigger guard is and just the makeup of the firearm itself. The other thing I don't like about trigger locks is, if I put a trigger lock on, let's say, this handgun, gun, what could I still do with it? Well, I could load up, put a loaded magazine inside the gun, I can cycle the action, I can chamber around all with the trigger lock on it. And I don't like that. Uh, personally, even with a, a rifle, same thing. I can insert a magazine, I can cycle the action, chamber around all with the trigger lock on there. Um, now with a cable, I can't do any of that stuff. I'm actually quite a fan of cables for handguns because if you just lock the action open like that, you run the cable right through the magazine well, through the grip, and you can't do any of those things that I just talked about. So for me, it's a really, uh, it's the most secure that you can possibly lock your firearm out. Now, even with, let's say, a pump action shotgun, with a pump action, cable still works great. You take your action, throw that open, run the cable right through here, and again, you have a very positive and very safe lockout procedure for your firearm. The other thing is if you put, let's say in, in contrast, if you put a trigger lock on there, what can I still do with the gun? Well, I can run the pump forward. I can fully load the magazine. I can cycle the action. I can chamber around all with the trigger lock on there. So, you know, are people running around with our firearms with trigger locks on them unauthorized? Almost never, but you never know. So now the best and final part about tri uh, trigger locks versus cables is, what if I lose my keys? And that's uh, that's an issue if you have key locks. I've gone to, uh, the majority of my locks are now all combination. Why? Because I lose the keys. But let's say you did have keyed locks. Uh, the worst thing, uh, worst case scenario for you if with a cable is you cut the cable off and you're out $10. Uh, with a trigger lock, if it was a keyed lock, you're gonna be drilling stuff and prying and probably damage your firearm and, and whatnot. So anyway, it's up to you, whichever you like better, but that's my opinion. Hopefully that was useful and stay safe. In part one of Project Maple Seed, we tag along with Rick Cuttingback, today's instructor, as he goes through some of the detailed instruction the participants will use to increase their downrange accuracy. The reticle never stops moving. What you have to do is just pick the right time, anticipate when it's gonna cross, and then you're doing that one, two, three, right? You're, you're pulling it straight, uninterrupted, straight back, and then it's gonna break. It's not slap, right? So it's somewhere in between there, you gotta figure that out. All right, so the next point of instruction is the seated steady hold factors. Jordan, are you, uh, are you yeah. flexible? Yeah. You do yoga or Pilates or anything? <laughs> no. Tai we'll, we'll find out. So Jordan's gonna rotate so you guys can see. So first position, cross-legged position. The trigger side foot is on the outside. Okay, so they're scissored in. So he's trying to find a comfortable spot, comfortable stable spot. Okay, you're just trying to build a stable position, then you'll align yourself to the target after. Any questions? No? All right, so we're going to go for the second row of targets. We're going to start with the left target. You look. 
looking at pizza boxes at 400 meters. So if you're not hitting it, don't feel bad. We'll try to get you closer. Okay, so the other advice I want to give you was uh, don't chase the, the center, keep the same point of aim so we can start getting the groups. Yeah. Now here's the first test of listening. Did everyone, does everyone have their pen? Circle your, circle your group. And then later on, we'll get to the move. The Mission and District Rod and Gun Club in Mission, BC was the host for this Project Maple Seed training clinic. Yeah. Just shooting for the same point circle. of aim, yeah, just yeah. being a consistent five. group. All five. Okay? You guys are good. You guys are good shooters here in Mission. As he's looking through, what's important also is that the rifle goes up to the cheek, not the head. So if you're dipping your head down, then your rifle's not high enough which usually means you need to loosen your sling so you can get that higher on the shoulder. Ideally, the stock should be at shoulder height or higher, right, depending on your skill and the structure. But what you want is a good vertical head, aiming sideways, using the body as support for the sling to kind of tension it up like a straight jacket, right? And that's your support. Theoretically, you can hold that all day with the exception of this arm, or you can just drop. So if you drop that arm, it should be able to hold up like that. It's hard. That's, that's the hard part. So you can try open legged. If that works. The MDRGC's mission is to cultivate the conservation of all wildlife, to promote good sportsmanship, and to educate youth in the art of handling all sports equipment on the range and in the field. So the seated is very personal. You'll have to try all four different variations. Pick one that is the least uncomfortable for you. If you have joint issues, you can skip this, you can either go kneeling or you can, we can grab a seat. Uh, we can bring a chair over. That's, that's perfectly fine. Okay? Any questions on the cross-legged? The variant on this is cross-angle, which look exactly like this, except his legs are splayed out forward and his angles are crossed. That's it. Kind of more, more seated. You can bring him a little bit if you can. Yeah, like, something like that. Cross-angle. Again, elbows on the knee somewhere if you can. Right? Is that more or less comfortable, Jordan? Oh, this is way less comfortable. Less comfortable? So he's, that's probably not the position for him. But for some of you, that might be the one. Everything else is the same. Find good two flat spots on flat spots. Elbow under the rifle, flat hand, top sling. Everything else is the same. Next one is open-legged. So open his legs. Okay. This is the way you do it. Rick takes the time to give practical, real-life techniques that have been proven to dramatically improve the mechanics needed in the pursuit of shooting excellence. Your knees have to be in neutral position. They shouldn't be tensioned with muscle, right? You should be just resting on them. They don't, don't fake it, because it's gonna, your groups are gonna suck. Now we're gonna turn up the heat. So we're running at probably level five. Now we're gonna go to level eight, okay? So this is another stand, uh, sorry, a, st a seated or kneeling stage. You have two magazines now, two and eight. We're gonna start practicing the transition from standing to seated, and then also engaging multiple targets and doing a mag change. That's level eight. Mm -hmm. The only difference is there's no time. When I add time, it goes to 10, <laughs> okay? So this is, the more, this is the more complicated one. This is the more complicated one. He also teaches the class in a very personal way, making sure everyone feels included and at ease, all the while ensuring that the fundamentals are understood. Five rounds, breathing cycle, upper left. Trigger squeeze. Trigger squeeze. Hold the trigger back. Hold that trigger. Let's start over again. Let the Take your time. Take your time.
Be sure to look for part two of Project Maple Seed in an upcoming episode of Canada Downrange, where we will see the improvements of actual participants throughout the course of this amazing event. To learn more about Project Maple Seed, please visit mapleseedrifleman.com. You make me nervous, Doc. You make me nervous. That was good. Perfect ceasefire control, guys. Thank you. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.